The war in Ukraine has been rocking the market, but stocks were already reacting to COVID reopenings and sky-high inflation. I recently spoke to Franklin Templeton CEO Jenny Johnson about how to invest in this environment and where she's finding opportunity. Jenny, thanks so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Jack. Glad to be here. So I think we have to start with the headlines, um, not to discount the awful human toll that we're seeing in the Russian invasion of the Ukraine, but how long should long-term investors be thinking about this sort of geopolitical upheaval? Yeah, you know, this is one that, uh, that it, it, it certainly all the, all the rules that we've learned about, about diversification, because uh, you never know what's going to happen, um, <laughs> apply right now. You know, I, I think uh, Putin completely underestimated the Ukrainian people's willingness to fight him, the uh, capability of his own army, and frankly, the coordination of NATO. And so this looks like this is going to uh, drag out for a while. And, you know, I think it's on top of what we're already seeing with rising rates and, and um, supply chain issues. So this is just going to exacerbate inflation. I mean, it actually could bring you into a little bit of a stagflation. Uh, so, you know, I think investors have to be prepared for that kind of environment. So um, you talk about um, diversification. Obviously, looking at portfolio allocation, you ought to be in emerging markets. You ought to be in Europe. It's a particularly scary place to be right now. Do you just follow the Buffett mantra, be uh, greedy when others are fearful? <laughs> well, there's certainly always opportunity there. But, uh, um, you know, I think a couple of things. I think... Obviously, in, a, in an inflationary environment, you want things like uh, real estate, commodities, even arguably gold, if you're worried about currencies. But I think there's some fundamental trends that you can take advantage of. You know, why buck the trend, um, which are things like demographics. So if you look at emerging markets, not all countries are the, are the same as far as the age of the population. So places like India, Indonesia, Philippines, Africa, you know, those are young populations, uh, places where you have a rising middle class. So, uh, you know, I don't think you want to, this is where active management's important, right? I don't think it's, it's a broad brush. I think it's finding the areas of opportunity. Other big, you know, trends are technology, right? So, that, so the digitization of the economy, you know, there's still going to be opportunity there because we're in a massive industrial revolution. Uh, I think climate change, climate change is here for good. And so finding opportunities, um, you know, whether obviously renewable energy, we're all aware about, but things like, you know, agricultural technology, I think one of the things that have scared people is recognizing when you got 25% of, you know, wheat and, and corn, uh, where you're worried about whether the Ukraine can do planting and how that's going to affect the food supply. You're going to have people starting to think about how can you have, um, you know, food independence. And there's a lot of new technologies around farming, vertical farming, um, you know, precision farming that are all very, very important. And I think there's opportunity to invest in those kind of things. So your grandfather named the company after Benjamin Franklin. Um, now you've got an innovation that I assume would have thrilled Ben Franklin, blockchain, and you launched a money market fund based on a stable coin. Can you briefly explain what that is and why you would do such a thing? Absolutely. And I like to say that Ben Franklin is the Elon Musk of his day. He was an incredibly innovative guy who was incredibly successful in a lot of different things. Um, so, you know, we think that blockchain and tokenization is going to be a really key component to being able to unlock that uh, illiquidity that, that exists in alternatives and bring it to, the, to, you know, basically the masses. And so we wanted to make sure we understood how to do that. And uh, you know, there's a lot of stable coins. Anybody who's who's dabbling in the uh, crypto space understands that there's stable coins there yielding eight and ten percent. And if you have any you know investment background, you'd realize that in this rate environment, that's probably pretty hard to do. Um, so we wanted to come out with a legitimate, regulated stable coin. So we worked early on with the SEC um, to to you know get it approved, and they really worked with us on that. And so we've built the shareholder records all on blockchain. And now we can roll out other products there. Uh, and, you know, things like, here's what gets me so excited about the tokenization. I, I, I say that, that Bitcoin is the greatest distraction from the greatest disruption that'll be uh, happening to asset management. And so just take one portion of that, which is 
um, tokenizing illiquid assets. So you can own a building and sell it to a million people. And today you couldn't do that because if they wanted to sell it to somebody else, everybody would have to sign off and you'd have to go to the title company. The frictional cost of transferring your ownership is too hard. But if that could be embedded in a smart contract and all I have to do is sell the token, that suddenly unlocks a lot of assets. And I think we're, we're going to see some really interesting creativity that comes out of this. You could turn the Empire State Building into a mutual fund. Jennifer Johnson, thank you so much. Thank you.